Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. So today I want to talk actually about something which has been asked also a lot of times. Sometimes I get emails or messages also in the comments of the video and asking me why do you think Linux on the desktop is not that popular or is still a niche product? So that's actually a very good question. If you think about it, actually Linux has been around now since many, many years and it is very popular actually on servers, especially for businesses, but on the desktop, it struggles still a little bit. In fact, most of computers, as you probably already know, are running Windows or Mac OS and Linux is a very small niche. Now, if you're watching this channel or other Linux channels or other tech channels by that matter, Chances are that you are a tech savvy person or that you know a little bit more about tech than other people or than regular people, so to say. Now we have to put a little bit of things in context here. And that is most users actually who are using a computer are not actually tech savvy at all. So if I think, for example, about people who are working in a company and they are working with their PC or their laptops and they are used to use applications like Outlook, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, you name it, uh, it might be also Adobe applications. So they are used to certain software and they are used to a certain workflow. So it's not that they know the Windows operating system that well, but they know how it looks like, they know how it works. And that's what they are used to since they start working or since they started to have their hands on computers. Now, when they are going to buy a new computer, most likely they are going to buy a Windows PC or a Mac because that's what they are used to use. And you know, they are going to buy this laptop or this PC because the operating system comes already pre-installed. They don't have to think about that. They just open it up, they just set it up quickly and they can just start working the way they're used to work. So that's actually, in my opinion, one of the first big challenges that we have on the Linux desktop, and that is the installation. This is something that has been touched also from Linus Torvalds in one of his talks a few years ago, where he was saying that actually one of the reasons that Linux is not that popular on desktops, it's because it doesn't come pre-installed on any machine, or at least on a very few machines. Now think about it. If I would take one of those people who are not at all tech savvy and I would have to tell this person, hey, you just need to go to download an ISO, burn it to a USB stick, and don't forget also to turn off secure boot and fast boot on your BIOS and on Windows so that you can actually install the distribution, they would look at me like, what the hell is an ISO? What the hell do you mean by burning? What is secure boot? What is the BIOS? I have no idea. So you have already there a couple of steps that people have to overcome in order just to download the ISO and burn it to a USB stick. And then they have to try to somehow disable secure boot in the BIOS and also fast boot on Windows if they are dual booting. And then they have to find out also how they can start the USB stick from the keyboard. Something that normally they would never do because they just buy a laptop, whether it's a Windows PC or a Mac, and they would just open it up and it starts and you just have to set it up. Now, of course, this is a very big technical obstacle for people who are not tech savvy at all. They have basically very little chances to install the Linux distribution on their machine. Now, once they manage maybe to do that and they boot up the USB stick, they will have to go through the installer. Now, here we are talking about distributions which are providing an installer because if you're booting up something like Arch Linux, which I would never recommend to a person new to Linux, doesn't come with an installer. So you will have to install everything manually, which for them is absolutely a monster task. So you would have to suggest them probably a distribution for newcomers, like for example, Linux Lite or Linux Mint or even Ubuntu or Kubuntu. But they will still have to go to the website, download the ISO, burn it to a stick and then disable those features in the BIOS and then boot up the machine from the stick and then they would have to go through the installer. Now the installer actually, whether it's Calamares or Ubiquiti, are not that difficult so they will probably manage to do that fairly simply. The installer in Fedora it's good but it's not that intuitive so that might probably put off some people but I think that actually Calamares and Ubiquiti are actually quite good installers and they should be actually fairly simple to run through. Because to be honest with you if you're installing Windows actually from scratch and you have to go through the whole setup now there are like 10 or 15 steps before you come to the welcome screen and because of macOS also has been having more and more features in the last years you have more and more steps to go through also in the setup so I think Ubiquiti Ubiquiti and Calamares are actually quite good installers and they are very simple. So once they get to the installer and they can install the system, they will be able to start the machine, but then they have to learn probably something new because Linux is a new operating system. So that will be the first obstacle to install the distribution. But now you might be asking, well, Emmanuel, we have actually some manufacturers 
which are actually selling laptops uh, or desktops with Linux already pre-installed. Yes, it's very true. So you can go ahead and buy one of those. Now, here comes the second factor, which is the human factor. And that is for those users that we spoke about before who are used to work in a certain way with certain software and they know it well because they had to learn it a lot, even they don't love it. To think about buying another machine with another operating system, the question for them might be, well, do I have to learn actually everything from scratch? And the answer to that is most of the time, probably yes. Even some of the distributions look very similar to Windows or to Mac OS. If you take, for example, Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop environment, they are still probably going to have to learn something or maybe many things, depending on what they are used to. Without talking about the software, because if they're used to use some software like Outlook or Adobe software, you will not find them on Linux unless you're going to use, for example, for Outlook, the web apps. But for Adobe, if you're used to use Adobe Illustrator, for example, or Photoshop, we have some of the equivalents for those applications, which do not anyway offer probably the whole functionality that Photoshop uses, but they have completely different UI. They have a completely different workflow. And that means the user in that case would have to learn again everything from scratch without thinking about the fact that they would have to learn probably how the operating system works. So how do I update my machine? In Windows, I have Windows updates. On the Mac, I have the Mac updates in the settings application. On Linux, it depends on the distributions. Some distribution comes with their pre-installed store where you can update the packages. Some of them offers different applications to do that. So it really depends on the distribution, but it is definitely something that the user will have to get used to. Now, these two obstacles combined, I think are the big question mark for many people, whether they want to try Linux or not. If they probably feel ready to try something new and they have enough knowledge to be able to install the distribution on the machine, they might try to do that. But if they don't have any technical knowledge and they don't want to learn about that technical knowledge and they don't want to relearn how to use their computer, chances are that those people will never try out probably a Linux distribution. And those are, in my opinion, the two biggest issues in the Linux desktop. Now, like I said before, if you're watching this channel, chances are you're probably already tech savvy or you know already Windows well and you like computers and you want to try something new. I have a lot of people also in the comments who are new to Linux. They are watching the videos and they say, okay, I want to try Linux. It looks cool, but they know what to do. They know how to, you know, how to install the distribution on the machine. And then they are willing to learn something new with this new distribution. So they are willing to learn a new UI. Maybe they are willing to learn how actually Linux is working. They're curious about it. They want to know how can I update my software? Because in Windows, I used to have every application has its own updater, but in Linux, you have a central place for updating your application. So they want to learn, but if one one doesn't have this will and doesn't have the technical knowledge on how to install the distribution on the machine, chances are that the Linux desktop will be always a niche. So this is without actually talking about point release and rolling releases, because that will be something even more difficult to understand for certain people. Because again, those kind of users are used to have their machine up and running in a certain way. Whether they like it or not like it, it does not really matter. They are just there to work and they just want their machine to do the work that they need to do, and then they will go home in the evening and do something completely different. So for these kind of users, which are probably the biggest group of users of computers, the so-called desktop users, it's going to be always difficult to try Linux because of these two obstacles and probably others as well. Now, on the enterprise side, of course, this is completely different because we have, of course, a lot of Linux servers. We have a lot of system administrators as well. So there we have a little different focus. So the enterprise focus on Linux, it's completely different than it is on the desktop. But on the desktop, it is as it is right now. The only thing we can hope if we want to have more people coming to Linux is that we have more manufacturers offering probably Linux distributions on their models. We have, for example, nowadays Dell, which offers some laptops with uh, Ubuntu installed. We have now also Lenovo, who is offering also laptops with Linux installed. We have, of course, Linux manufacturers, like, for example, here in Europe, Tuxedo Computers, which is actually offering desktops and laptops with Linux already pre-installed. And we have also in the US System76, which is also offering desktops and laptops as well, and probably many others that I'm not mentioning here. So we have more manufacturers which are offering Linux already pre-installed. Now we need the people who want to try it out. So again, that's the human factor. If someone wants to learn something new or is curious to learn something new 
or maybe because they have an old laptop and they don't want to throw it away and they want to try something new with a new operating system which actually works on an old laptop, they might be maybe feeling to be using or trying out Linux. If not, they will go ahead and just buy a new Windows or a new Mac laptop or a desktop PC. So this is what I wanted to share with you in this video, guys. I'm interested also, of course, in knowing your opinion, what you think about this topic. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it and let's have a conversation. And thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I'll see you very soon in the next one.